Hello! I have just finished knitting this little garter stitch face scrubby and I've come to the point where I need to weave in my loose ends. So I thought I would show you how I do that. You'll need some sharp scissors and a darning needle and then you can get started. I'm going to start with the bottom edge. That's the edge where we cast on our stitches. I'll take that tail and I'll thread it onto my darning needle. Just like you're going to sew something. Then you pick up your work and you want to try to weave in your end so it follows along in the pattern that you've been working in so you don't get any strange nubby edges. I see that there's sort of a little V running here so I'm going to try to recreate that and tuck my work into the rest of the square. So I will thread it through. Just sort of finish out the pattern on the edge here. And then I'll go into weaving in my end just a little bit. Now some people will weave in their end quite a bit, like almost all the way to the middle of the square and then they don't tie a knot or anything else and clip the work like that. I always do a little knot, so I only weave in my stitches um, on a few of the rows. But I follow along with the stitches in the work, almost in a duplicate stitch, to make it match what's already there. So you see that little stitch running along? I'm trying to follow that. And we'll go through and under here to weave in and follow along with that row. And I'll do one more just so you can see what it means to follow those stitches and duplicate stitch and weave that in in case you don't want to do a knot. I know a lot of knitters do not like to add knots to their work, but I really do always put in a tiny little knot at the end to anchor that tail in. So I only do three, maybe four stitches like that um, in duplicate stitch. And then I will go ahead and take the tail off the darning needle and I'm going to split the plies. You see this is a four ply yarn, so I'll split it in half with my darning needle very gently to separate it into two pieces. I will put half of that or two of the plies back onto my darning needle and I'm going to loop this bit just around one stitch to anchor it in and make it come out where it was coming from in the first place. And then I'll take it off the darning needle again and I'm going to tie a knot here. So I'll take one side of the tail and put it towards my right and one towards my left. I'll pick them up with opposite hands, okay? So you're going to pick the right string up with your left hand and the left string with your right hand. And then you'll cross them to make a knot and pull it, but don't pull too tightly, just enough to anchor it in place. If you pull it too tightly, all of your stitches will run in that corner and it will get a little lumpy. So just enough to where it needs to be tucked in. And then we're gonna lay those back and we're going to switch hands. So again, we'll grab that string with the opposite hand, like that. Then we're going to cross it over again and pull that knot as tight as you can. If it starts to slip into itself and the stitches start looking funny, stop 
and you'll make another knot in the same way. But as mine can show you, if you've got these two knots crossed the correct way, they'll pull into each other and tighten in place. They're not going to slip on either side. And it's anchored in there quite well. And as you see, that knot is really very tiny. I know some people are very opposed to knots in knitting, but I feel like the exchange for that tiny knot, um, the security you get of the tail just not coming off, I think that's a better exchange in my opinion, but of course you do what you want. All right, so now once I have that tiny knot in there and it's tight, again, if it slips at all, do one more of those knots. But if it doesn't slip, you go ahead and take your scissors and clip those two little tails as closely to the knot as you can get without clipping the knot itself. And set those aside. And then when you stretch your knitting work, that knot pretty much disappears. You can kind of see it, but not really. It usually slips under one of the purl stitches. And you, wove, you have woven in that end. We'll do the other side. This is the bind off side next. And I like to match that pattern as well. First, we'll put that tail onto our darning needle. pick it up and try to match the pattern. So you see some little loops here. This guy got a little bit too tight, so let's loosen him up and we'll try to make that match. So I'm going to bring my needle down and through the little nub in the next row. and that'll tuck it in. But you see this side has kind of a loose bit. So you can anchor that in when you're weaving in that loose end. See how I've woven it around a little bit? And then I'm gonna go back up here to match that bind off by sticking it through one of those little loops. And I've gotten another little loop there that matches. Next, I'll go down and do that duplicate stitch for just a bit, enough to tighten up this wonky end here. And then I'll tie it in with another tiny knot. So try and find a stitch that you can follow along. It's kind of a snake-like S pattern almost that you're going to be making. You see how that fixes the nubby bit on the edge? And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and tie that in. I don't think I need to do any more duplicate stitch, but of course, if you're not going to make a little knot, you should probably go quite a bit further with that duplicate stitch, just so that if your tail does slip out, you can fix it and weave it back in. So at this point, I'll take my darning needle off that tail. And in the same way that I did before, I'm going to split the plies in half. And put two of them onto the darning needle again. I'll go here and just loop around that last stitch so that it will anchor that knot in place on one of the stitches and remove the tail from the darning needle. We'll go ahead and make our knot at this point. Again, lay the two tails pointing in opposite directions and grab each end with the opposite hand. 
across them. Bring that through and pull, but not too tightly. Just enough so it's in place. Switch your hands and grab the opposite tail. Bring that through. And try to pull this one tightly. If you feel it slipping, stop pulling and make another knot. This one's not slipping, so we're, we're going to be able to clip it with our scissors and get rid of those two little tails. Get it as close as possible to the knot. And your tails are gone. Stretch it just a bit to make sure the knot is secure. And as you stretch it, you see the knot basically disappears. When you go to block that, the knot will get even more camouflaged, if you will, and you are free of those loose ends. You're ready to block that or wash it or do with it what you will. I hope that that helped you, and I hope you have a wonderful day.